has inspired uh, many of us in JPAL, including myself. Uh, she's director of SNS, which is an organization that provides, um, it helps empower ordinary people by providing them information against which they can hold their elected representatives to account. Now, Anjali has taken this idea of transparency and accountability into her, her own work uh, by opening up the programs of SNS to rigorous evaluation. And many others are now seeking to replicate the successes that we have found at SK SNS in other contexts and in other continents. Please, wel please join me in welcoming Anjali. Thank you very much, and let me begin by congratulating JPAL uh, on turning 10, and thank you very much for inviting us here to be part of these celebrations. Uh, JPAL has become very much a part of the SNS family, and since Abhijit walked into our office uh, in 2008, we've done several uh, projects together, and uh, thank you very much for having us here to celebrate with you on this very special day. Uh, let me just start very briefly by telling you about SNS. SNS is a non-governmental organization. We were set up in 2003. We are not affiliated with any political party, and we work on in enhancing transparency and accountability in government functioning. Uh, one of the issues that we engage with very deeply is the right to information. A law was passed in India in 2005, giving every citizen of the country the right to seek information from the government which has enabled people to hold the government accountable. And people have recognized the power of this right because they have actually made the connect between information and their being able to access their very fundamental rights and entitlements, which in a corrupt regime very often doesn't reach people. So where people are, for example, not getting their health benefits or not getting the subsidized food grains, when they've filed right to information applications, they have access documents, they've actually been able to pressurize and engage with the government to make sure that what was due to them actually reached them. So there is, in fact, a very, very vibrant use of the Right to Information Act in India. And one of the things that SNS does is to build capacities of citizens to use the Right to Information Act. We hold meetings in a lot of urban poor settlements called slums, which are unauthorized settlements, and where we build capacities of people to use the Right to Information. These meetings are fairly well attended. But interestingly, before elections in 2004 in Delhi, where we work, people suddenly stopped coming for our meetings. So we were very surprised. We wondered what happened. And when we went to the slums, to these urban poor settlements, and asked people what happened, they said that they had been told that there was their slums and their houses were going to be demolished. And so they couldn't come out for our meetings. We understood that's a very legitimate reason to not attend meetings when you have your house under threat. But after elections, suddenly, people started coming back for the meetings again. The following year, we had municipality elections, and the same pattern repeated itself. So people stopped coming for our meetings again, and when we went back and asked them why, they said, our slums are going to be demolished, and so we can't come for these meetings. We thought there was something wrong. We filed right to information applications and asked for information on the names of the slums which were going to be demolished. And when we got the information, none of the slums where we worked was actually on that list. So we went to all the slums and pasted that list in those slums and told people that your slum isn't on this list. So women went back and came when they came for our meetings. They said to us that we found out that it's actually the candidates who are standing for elections who are responsible for spreading these rumors and misinformation campaigns where they tell us that our slums are going to be demolished unless they are voted into power. And that's the only way we can save our slums. 
So there was this huge anger where people said that why can't we have information about what our elected representatives do when they're elected? They said that we vote them into power. Every five years, they come asking for our votes. But after we voted them in, we don't see them again. They don't come to consult with us. They never bother asking us what, is, what our development problems and priorities are. So they wanted to know what their elected representatives did once they were voted into power. In fact, a lot of people came out and also said that they had no idea what they were supposed to do, what elected representatives, what their roles are, what they are supposed to do for the people. So our first set of RTI applications on this issue, because the Right to Information Act in India actually covers the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. So we help people file applications asking for the stated roles and responsibilities of elected representatives. It took us almost a year. Our application went from department to department, from the parliament to the state legislatures, only to be told that please go back to the Constitution and to the Representation of People's Act. We don't have stated roles and responsibilities of elected representatives anywhere. So we finally did that, and we culled out the main primary responsibilities of elected representatives. And the three primary responsibilities we listed out and we circulated that information in the slums where we work. The three primary responsibilities essentially are within the legislature, where they're supposed to raise questions of public importance. Each of the elected representatives in India gets a constituency development fund or a local area development fund, which they're supposed to consult with their constituency members, and they're supposed to work on the ba basic most priority development needs of their people. And the third is that each of them is a chairperson of several vigilance monitoring committees, which are supposed to monitor the functioning of the executive, the police, the ration, uh, public distribution system, public health. They are on several committees which are supposed to function the monitoring of the, of the executive. We disseminated this information in the slum communities and also amongst non-poor settlements. And one resounding realization was that nobody, however educated or uneducated they were, were actually aware of most of these responsibilities. People said that they had no idea that their elected representatives were in fact getting local area development funds. Even where people said that they'd heard about it, they had no idea how much funds were available and where they were in fact being spent. So there was a great deal of interest when people got to know about their roles as to what their individual elected representatives were doing. For example, in, let me just uh, move ahead. This, this is the sort of uh, information that came out at an aggregate level. Uh, each year, there were only about 22 meetings of the Delhi Legislative Assembly that were held uh, in the period 2009 to 2013. I'm giving you some statistics, the latest statistics. And the Assembly met for less than 70 hours on an average in a year. Uh, 17 members of Legislative Assembly out of 17 never raised a single question. In none of the uh, constituencies were the six stipulated meetings of the police vigilance committee that was supposed to happen took place. None of the districts had district grievance redress committees which were supposed to look into people's grievances related to water, electricity, and sanitation. None of those were actually set up. And the ration vigilance committee didn't have any meetings in 28 of the 70 constituencies. We accessed information on individual elected representatives before the 2008 elections that were held in Delhi for the Legislative Assembly. This was the information that came out at an aggregate, but we also managed under the Right to Information Act to receive information on each of the elected representatives. And when we put out that information to people, people were really, really interested in getting that information and in engaging with that information. In fact, in one of the constituencies I remember, which is known for its water scarcity, when we gave people information on how their local elected representative had spent the local area development funds, it turned out that he'd spent 70% of his funds on constructing fountains in parks where people had no water to drink in their homes. 
So women from slums got together and went to their elected representative and said, we're not going to vote for you in the forthcoming election because we've been coming to you instead of helping us address our drinking water problem, we realized that you've actually been spending your funds on constructing fountains and parks. So very quickly, the local area representative got his act together and immediately got several water pipes laid in the various slums and made sure that people had water in their homes, and which actually proved to people that using the currency of the vote, they could in fact hold their elected representative accountable if they had information, because without information, the engagement had been meaningless. We wondered how to get the information across to a larger section of people. And uh, in one of the community meetings, one woman stood up and said, all our children go to school and they get a report card on their performance. So why shouldn't each elected representative be given a report card on how they perform in their five-year tenure? So we brought out report cards on the performance of elected representatives. Information is given and a snapshot on each of the representatives, how they performed in the assembly, how many times they attended assembly, how many questions they asked, what they asked the questions on, how they spend the funds at their disposal, what are the issues they spend the funds on, and how they performed on the various committees that they're members of. The, these report cards, we, wherever we were working, we realized had substantial impact but we were told repeatedly by people that the only thing that impacts politicians is votes. And we had no idea how this would impact the voting patterns of people. And in India, like I realize it's true across many countries, voting is very identity-based. So we have religions on, along which people vote. People vote along the lines of caste, religion, many other things, but would performance be something on which people would actually vote along? And that's when we met Abhijit and Rohini. And we set up a project where uh, 10 constituencies were chosen which had high slum densities. And in these, there were treatment slums that were chosen where the report cards were dis disseminated and there were door-to-door -door campaigns to distribute report cards and information, pamphlets on, the perform on what the roles and responsibilities of elected representatives are. There were... The results that we got were very encouraging. Uh, four percent increase in water turnout in the treatment areas where people had information, which actually which actually showed that where people got information, they realized the relevance of their elected representative and went out and voted much more than they were voting before. There was five percent increase in the vote share of incumbents who performed well on certain committees, like the Food Vigilance Committee, which is really relevant to the slum settlements where the poor lived. So what it really showed to us was that it wasn't just anecdotal evidence that we had to sort of move forward with. It also showed that there was a certain voter engagement with that information, and people were willing to use performance as an indicator for deciding what and whom they should vote for. We have used these results fairly widely. We've, of course, carried on with our work in the slum communities where we work, but we've also engaged at the policy level to bring about greater transparency in the functioning of elected representatives. We worked with the governments and with the Central Information Commission in India to make sure that there are orders which have come out which state that information on project-wise details of how local area development funds are spent must be put out in every constituency on boards in the local language so that people can engage with that information and can, in fact, meaningfully engage with their elected representatives to ensure that their development needs are met. Similarly, we, the, we've uh, worked with the Information Commission in India to also make sure that there is a live webcast of the proceedings of the Legislative Assembly so that people can have access to information on what happens on their behalf in the Legislative Assemblies and the Parliament. Stop here. Thank you very much.